Hello everyone and welcome back to Ray's Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2 where I intend to circumnavigate Kerbin with the Sakura which was designed to circumnavigate Kerbin though not in the most efficient way possible in sort of an obnoxious counterintuitive way <laughs> as you might say uh, though uh, it, its engines are very efficient it's just that they're way overpowered for the size of the thing and probably not the best choice if you want to go fast but anyway, I decided to go with this because it was an interesting idea, and odd, and odd things, well, they have a charm to them. But anyway, I haven't circumnavigated Kerbin in this version with it. I did test fly it to make sure that it worked. In the previous version, we went around Kerbin and we crashed into the runway when we came back because we didn't have any fuel left at that point. So it just barely made it back to the KSC, but then I crashed. Uh, so we are going to try to do better this time, but there's no guarantees. This is a different version of KSP now, a KSP2 now, and we would like to see if it still works or if it needs improvement. So here we go. Again, it'll fly. It's just what happens as far as efficiency is concerned. Up we go. And also, will extending the landing gear destroy the thing? We saw with the heavy dropship around the moon that sometimes just extending the landing gear even around the moon, where there's no atmosphere, uh, can wreck things. So, we're right at Mach 1, basically. It's not breaking Mach 1 right now, but we're climbing, so. Well, it's not having an easy time getting to higher speeds right now. We do want to get to about 500 meters per second here. Seems to be struggling more than in the previous version. We need more wing area, it looks like. There are big wing pieces down here, along with everything else. That actually shows the thrust now. They didn't used to do that before. I can't break the speed of sound. Unlike previously. I think may maybe they've reduced the limits on them. And that's why? I'm not sure. Have they nerfed my Sakura? I'm trying to dive here in order to break the sound barrier, but I absolutely can't. Okay, well... We might have to go at below the sound barrier around the world, or we might have to do something completely different. Let me... We'll, we'll try below the sound barrier, and I'll just have to take longer and use a lot of extra fizz warp, and we'll see how that works out. So I'm going to revert to launch on the assumption that I'm not going past the sound barrier, and try to go like that. But previously, in the previous version when we tested that, it turned out that going below the sound barrier was not as efficient as going at 500 meters per second, which is the max I was able to do in the previous version. But it seems like this version, I don't think I'm going to be able to go that fast. I mean, it really accelerates really well here. Let's see if it can break the wall down here. It's 343 at sea level. But it has to do that substantially. All, uh, even past 343, we're still transonic. Really, it needs to get beyond 400. before it stops being sticky. Well, it can go. So they haven't artificially limited it. It can go past the speed of sound convincingly. It's just not as good at it as before. Well, let's just try to gently go up at this speed and not try to lose the speed. Let's just try and keep the speed this time. But we'll be guzzling gas down here. 
It tends towards the right too, which is annoying, especially once we apply Fizz Warp. But we've already lost a whole ton of fuel trying to climb while maintaining speed, so that's not great. But being able to maintain altitude while using less pitch is helpful, and we can only do that when it's going fast. Uh, speed is going down and altitude isn't going up very much. This really is worse performance than before, I think. Unless I'm misremembering. I'm going to have to find some way to make it less draggy, it looks like. One problem is the wingspan is basically as small as I can make this kind of wing. Well, I guess we can make it like that, but so much less interesting. <laughs> but yeah, it's just 0 0.01 versus 0 0.0. Though it's possible I'm just flying it wrong. Okay, let's see if these tweaks work. This is really a plane on the edge of being possible. Oh, it's having trouble lifting off now. Well, maybe that just means it's faster. <laughs> well, we're climbing and we're accelerating. That's a good start. Oh, wait, we're not accelerating anymore. Let's keep the good start going here. Oh, it's losing speed now. Fine, you know what? Let's just try subsonic. But it's gotta take a lot more trim to stay up subsonic. And a lot more control surface deflection. Which means more drag. But we'll try to go higher up. Uh, well, I mean, we're using maximum trim here. And we're decelerating. It's not what I want to do. Well, let's try Fizz Warp. But we still seem to have to go full thrust in order to maintain this speed, which is about Mach 0.9-ish. We're here right now, we've already burned 1.3 tons. That is one quarter of our fuel. Now I'm aware you can cheat it by putting the engine on the back and sort of obstructing its drag and getting the thrust without the drag like that. I, I know. We're, uh, we're trying not to encourage such things. I don't think the efficiency difference is huge going up from like 7,500 meters to 8,000. Uh, well, anyway, we'll try to ascend as much as possible. It's a little bit twitchy at 4x time warp though. Really, the limitation of drag by having small wing surfaces only makes sense if we can go past the speed of sound. I think as we are probably not going to make it around the world this time, uh, we should extend the bottom wing pieces, those huge ones already, and sort of pull them down and out, and just get rid of these, even though they're iconic and everything, uh, and try and get more lift out of these, and see if that gives us better efficiency. So we'll at least reduce the mass and if we can make these larger, maybe we don't have to deflect so much in order to get the lift we need to stay up here. If, uh, yeah, and that's beneficial if we're not going to break the speed of sound, I think. And right now we're approaching halfway through our fuel and only a quarter of the way through our flight. So it's just not going to work. Even though we're going to get more delta-v on the back end of the fuel, it's not going to be enough. So, I'll uh, abort this one and we'll try that change, even though it's not quite as nice.
Okay, this variant is almost certainly a bad idea. We've removed a lot of wing surface. We've just got canards up front here, and I've moved these back to compensate for the canards. But uh, with but uh, we we've actually reduced the wing area, and that's probably a bad thing. But it really depends on how Kerbal wants to calculate things. So yeah, basically we're wondering about how it's going to do things with this. Right, tweak the canard. I guess that's okay. Oh well, all right. Let's have these. Well, the wing angle's already maxed out. Well, it's that... Well, okay, 1.01... .01. So that we can sweep it back a little bit. I guess. That's a bit close. Yeah, so... I'm just curious to see what's gonna happen. And I don't think this is particularly a good variant of it, but this will be the last one for this episode. We'll have to continue pondering this because it sure seems like it performs a little bit worse than the previous version where it actually managed to go around the world so and it really cut that one close so i don't know maybe this is unworkable in this version or i'll have to tuck in wing surfaces where they don't belong or something like that we'll see uh these might be able to do both pitch in Roll now. Though I actually, they're not placed great for roll. But I guess we can try it. Maybe they'll go the wrong way. We'll have to see. Keep an eye on those. They seem to be going the right way. But we're not taking off very easily. It's not less wing mass this time, though. It's actually the same wing mass, I think, because it doesn't adjust based on wing area. No, well, it seems to go up quickly enough, at least at this point, but now it's slowing down there. Well, rate of ascent is going down. Well, I'll just let it go and see what happens. We'll see how far we get. We're at 7 kilometers right now, 300 meters per second. I'll just leave it here. I'm not gonna try and pull up or anything or slow down. It's a bit disappointing though. Where's my 500 meters per second? Okay, well it's really going down now. I'll have to trim up a little bit. Hope that stops. Well, one ton of fuel and that's all we've gotten. I'm gonna start time warping now. With the current wing configuration, roll is sort of wobbly because it's coupled with pitch. The old wing surfaces, because they were more directly in line with the center of mass, handled roll better. I certainly don't have much hope of going fast with this plane anymore. I mean, at low levels it can, but it doesn't seem like it can sustain it at higher altitudes. Probably because it changes with the way the wings work. Well, above 10 kilometers now. Slow. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's not that slow. It depends on how much fuel we're consuming. We're really trying to go up to the limit of our capabilities here. Now, in theory, these engines should be all able to haul an airliner at this altitude and this speed. It's amazing that they can't push this little guy any better than they are. Given that they are capable of pushing it past 400 meters per second. Well, I'll ponder this and try and come up with some way to optimize it. I don't think our previous wing configuration was good enough. Alright, night time. We're not halfway through our fuel yet. We are less than a quarter of the way, well maybe a quarter of the way from the KSC though. This time I'll just go as far as I can go and see where we end up. Well the plane sure isn't drifting any higher as we lighten up here. We still have maxed out pitch trim. 
And we're not going any faster, and we're not really going any higher. We have about a quarter of our fuel left. And we are not really halfway through the flight. All I'm hoping for right now is I can set it down in daylight would be nice. Is there land over here? I think there's land over here. I don't know if we're gonna get over there though. But that's way short of where this used to be able to go. I think they watched my video and then deliberately nerfed everything to hurt my Sakura. Okay, we did make it through the night and to dawn. We are here. We have 1.25 tons of fuel left. And I guess we have to land somewhere around here or we're gonna run out of land. As far as how much ground we covered, just basically half of Kerbin, which is really falling short by quite a lot. But again, this thing isn't very efficient if it's not going 500 meters per second. So, well, I suppose we should start descending. That's maybe a little bit fat. Uh, okay, uh, let's get out of Fizz Warp. <laughs> it's a little bit too extreme with Fizz Warp there. I don't know, this clearing looks pretty nice. That one over there doesn't look too bad either. But I guess we'll try and go further. Well, there's a coast right there. I think it's that inlet. So, I think I'll land along that. Well, this has been sort of disappointing with the Sakura. Maybe I need to just create a larger SST, uh, not SST, <laughs> well, that'd be nice too. But uh, a larger circumnavigation plane that will just carry overwhelming amounts of fuel and you know, basically be an airliner about it since we can't push it faster or we could try something that's super fast it's either go big or go fast I think but shouldn't this Sakura be abandoned? well if I come up with some idea about how to fix it without playing any tricks I will proceed with that, but right now I don't see an easy one. Okay, well, let me just make sure that we are at speeds where dropping the landing gear will be okay. Since the impact tolerance is 150, and I suppose anything below 150 should be okay, right? No, apparently not. Okay, well, good thing we didn't make it around the world, otherwise that would be very disappointing. <laughs> Are the landing gear just busted? I mean, it's a structural linkage. Ooh. Um, no, the landing gear is attached to the engines. And... The engines are attached to the body with struts. There's struts between the engines and the body. But the landing gear isn't on the wings, it's on the engines. They're not tweaked out at all. Yeah, I think I'll just skip doing planes in this version. and Because I've had the same problem, uh, not even in the atmosphere, but with the heavy dropship when we were trying to land on the moon, we extended the landing gear and we had this problem. So... Um, yeah, I don't know if it is just uh, my problem thing or whether other people have this particular problem. Um, in the case of the heavy dropship, it's on fuel pods that are uh, attached to the wings. But they're not tweaked out. They're directly attached to the wings and they're fuel pods. But in that case, it's wings. In neither case are the landing gear directly attached to the body. So, anyway... Well, yeah, the Sakura does not seem to be doing what it's supposed to do in this version of KSB2. We might want to wait until another one, or maybe the idea is just not going to be workable in future versions. We will see. Well, it'd be a good way to check out how things have changed from version to version. Uh, probably not with this one. We'll go back to the more eclectic 
Sakura, since this didn't help much. And I didn't really expect this format to help much. And I'll think about it more. We'll see if I can come up with something. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.